computer, I guess. Well, that works. Oh, continue. Yeah, it's there like they have to ask for your consent. I appreciate it. Welcome to Jerry Berry's Fantastic Library, the podcast where I interview everyday average people about their fantastic lives. I think that's the first time that's came out really good. I'm um, average. <laughs> we all are. I haven't done an interview in a couple of weeks because it was my birthday and then it was... Um, my the weekend after my birthday and then I created a bunch of stuff that had nothing to do with interviewing people for you to watch and now I'm finally back at it so did you have a good birthday I did you turned 30 as well right in January yes I yeah did yeah we're old now um we are <laughs> So uh, talking to Scott today I went to high school with him approximately 300 years ago and um yeah and that's about it we don't really have an agenda but we always start with talking about the magical moment that we met and I honestly don't remember the moment we met because it was so long ago and I suffer from a lot of childhood trauma so I don't remember a lot of my childhood so but I know that your grandma lived across the street from me for a long time <laughs> that's where I was gonna go I'm like you know one of the first memories I can remember of you in May are probably across the street uh you guys had a nice pool yeah you, you um, had the trampoline so we would switchies yeah and i remember i remember something about a shotgun maybe <laughs> yeah we were very much um yeah uh, <laughs> we were very much like duck dynasty i feel like in my opinion on that side of the road <laughs> It was a fun side of the road. I got to go swimming. I met you guys. It was like not a bad time at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember in middle school hanging out uh, then, uh, Mrs. Leonard, we used to eat lunch with Mr. Cook because we were that weird. Um, oh my God, I forgot about that. What instrument did you play in middle school? Nothing. I was in chorus. <laughs> I was just trying That's to That's the best like part. <laughs> I was like, Brie, why were you hanging out? But he always had vanilla Cokes. He did. He always had vanilla Coke. <laughs> <laughs> why are we hanging out? Because we were the weird kids, that's all. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> and Mr. Mauer was too cool to hang out with middle school kids after school. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a blast from the past. I remember your mom being the chaperone that sat next to me on the bus to New York in eighth grade. She did go on that trip. Yeah, I don't know if you were on our bus or even on that trip, but I know your mom was. I was on that trip. Was I on the bus? Remains to be seen, <laughs> I don't know. I remember I was in a group with people that I didn't like. So I ended up putting myself into a boy group, which isn't unusual for me. And it was <laughs> Sam, Kirshner, man, these are like blasts from the past. And then the other kid, I don't know his real name, but we called him Judo, and he didn't go to high school with us. He like stopped after middle school. Oh. And they were both weirdos for sure. So I fit right in. It's and perfect. so since I kind of like put myself there, the school was like, oh no, boys and girls can't sit next together. So then they sat me next to your mom. And that's how that worked. <laughs> I love that. That's a that's a great story. Like boys and girls, no. What, what is it? No purpling, no reds. And yeah. Blue, uh, uh. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, what was I gonna say? In that New York trip, I remember explicitly we were in the Empire State Building, and I think we lost Brian Wright. Oh, I forgot about that guy. And All so these we names were, are like blast yeah, in the past. Like we I never were think late to the Statue of Liberty. I remember that. And I was like, man, I'm going to go to the Statue of Liberty because that just seemed cool. I mean, we, it probably still is cool too, but. <laughs> we were, we ended up like riding a boat around it. I don't even think we got off the boat. No, we didn't. We did not get off the boat. Yeah. And I think it's because Brian got lost. Yeah. I remember <laughs> we got lost in, not we, us, me and somebody else, us got lost in Washington, D.C. in seventh grade. And we ended up getting to the Lincoln Memorial uh, like an hour before the rest of the school. So we aren't even in the school picture of everybody on the stairs. <laughs> we got lost and went there super early. Um, I don't know how that happened, but whatever adult was with us clearly wasn't with it that day. So <laughs> I don't think my mom was on the D.C. trip. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever. But it sounded like a bunch of rich, privileged white kids going to new york and dc it's like mind-blowing over here in california that we just drove to new york and dc because if you drive anywhere for like 10 hours you're still in california 
So yeah, like, to drive, to leave school at 5 a.m. on a bus and get to New York like a few hours later is just like mind blowing to my husband. He's like, I don't understand it. Does, what are what are miles? I don't know. Um, it's the Northeast Corridor. You could be like, I'm going to literally any city you probably <laughs> know in America. Like most yeah. of them, at least. It's all just like, you know, within 10 hours, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. I, if yeah. Florida's a day away. Yeah, exactly. So on the West Coast, it's all just California. And then there's like some weirdos in the Pacific Northwest, but um, no offense to them. I love them too. It's fine. Anyways, um, when did you move to Missouri? Oh, when did I move to Missouri? I mean, Missouri. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to offend you. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, you it was in my head. I, it was literally like an intrusive thought where I was like, don't say Missouri. Don't say Missouri. Don't say Missouri. <laughs> don't say Missouri. Yeah, I know. I, I say like when people say, where do you live? I say, I am in misery. And there's ain't nobody that could comfort me, um, you know. So uh, actually, I came here after college for work. So I work for a large aerospace company that I won't name, but everybody yes. can figure out. There's only like two of them. One of them's in America. One's not in America. Do okay. your own work, audience. Um, okay, I have no time to to research that. Hopefully, somebody will comment it for me. Sure. So. Um, <laughs> Anyway, like, you know, as part of that, they're like, where do you want to go? You can go to Charleston, you can go to Seattle, or you can go to St. Louis. So, of course, I'm like, okay, Charleston sounds really cool, but, like, I also want to get, like, all the way out to Seattle and see, like, the big city, you know, from Elizabeth. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I went to college at Penn State. It's, you know, not a small place, but it's still a small town where it is uh, in State College. So yeah. I wanted to get somewhere big. Um, and so I picked Charleston first then Seattle, and then St. Louis, and, like, with my luck, I got sent to misery, so. Um, third pick you know, was the charm, I guess. Yeah, third pick was the charm, and you know what? It's a, it's a little different, but I shouldn't really knock it too much. There's a lot of great people and a lot of great things around here, uh, and, you know, eight years later, I still haven't left, and I have the opportunity. Oh. I do travel a lot, though. That helps. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just came down here for work, and uh, I exist here. Is it better than Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? It's very similar, actually. Oh, so, that's depressing. Okay. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's, it's like similar, plus more racism, <laughs> which is like not actually exciting at all. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's... It, and more corn, I'd imagine. I think the one time that I drove near Missouri, it was just all corn. It is soy and corn, and if you like pork, there are plenty of pigs to eat. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a hog and soybean state for sure. Um, weird but, uh, weird combo, but all right. Yeah, they like their agriculture. Yeah, isn't um isn't like Kansas City in Missouri? Yes. Yeah, so and that's I'm known for its barbecue, right? Okay. Yeah, that's very controversial around here because there's also a St. Louis style barbecue, and um, you know, honestly, as someone with very little skin in the game they're both really good i like barbecue let's stop <laughs> fighting and just enjoy it all it's great stuff not to mention the only uh thing that we had in pittsburgh as far as barbecue was the giant chicken that held the sign on 51 do you remember <laughs> that <laughs> i still remember that to this day i don't know what that place is called but it was a giant chicken that held a sign and that had, that place had barbecue and it was just a window no indoor seating <laughs> which is a really bad business model where it's cold and snowing six months out of the year but yeah but neither here nor there <laughs> <laughs> so um i like that though is uh missouri a fuck i can't remember my words is missouri um weed legal or weed medical or none of the above it's medically legal as of now and when you go to the you know medical dispensaries you get the petitions for like the, the full legal so um i expect full legal will be pretty soon um, Missouri is a very like uh, conservative state. So yeah. a lot of times our lawmakers don't want to do anything. However, what you can do in Missouri is if you have like five people sign a petition, you can get on a ballot. And so a lot of the things that are done in the state are people who uh, sign petitions and stuff. So you get petitions for like, you know, should we allow bingo to be done by, you know, more than just a grandma who's had two weeks of training, like all sorts of weird things that are like in the state constitution, you get that. state constitutional amendments to like, you know, undo it. So we'll have things passed and then we'll have things like unpassed by the voters and it just goes back and forth. It's, you know, 
supposed to be very people friendly and i guess it is if you have enough people to sign up and <laughs> legalize weed but otherwise it's like it's a small red state yeah i feel like uh once i feel like once people of, of all uh political sides realize how much money it generates they tend to like try to go for it a little bit so do you have a medical card then or do you just black market that shit I have a medical card because I just, you know, it's, it's like 25 bucks a year and yeah. to, to get rid of like any liability for 25 bucks is just yeah. worth it to me. I heard a rumor that if you have a medical card, then you can't own a gun. Is that true? Is that a state well, law? Is that a federal law? First of all, there are no like freaking gun laws. That's just like a bullshit <laughs> joke. Like there's things you're supposed to be able to do, but like, look, I have a library card and I have a couple firearms and I will tell you that they asked me to like bring my driver's license in to like renew my library card so <laughs> I could get books. But I could tell you like when I wanted to buy my guns, my driver's license did not match the address that I put on my forms because I had moved. And so they're like, can you print out your personal property tax receipt? So I went on like my county's website. I emailed the guy that I paid my taxes to like some fucking Yahoo address. And <laughs> it doesn't have my picture or anything, but he's like, okay, like you paid taxes to this address. Here's your gun. And it's <laughs> hard for me to get a book. So um, yeah. I loved that explanation and everything about it. That was amazing. Um <laughs> So, like, yeah, you're not supposed to have, like, guns and a medical card, but who's going to stop you and prosecute you? And if they do, like, can it go through? I think there's a lot of gray area. That's very interesting. I've known people to not want to get a medical card because they're convinced they won't be allowed to get guns. And I'm like, I don't know. Have oh. you turned on the news? There seems to be a lot of shootings going on with people that probably have medical marijuana cards. So yeah. So um, I'm not saying know, that all medical marijuana card owners are, are shooters. I realize that came out wrong, but I feel like a lot of people smoke. <laughs> like a yeah, lot. exactly. Like, it's just like a lot of people who drink water murder people too. Like you know, it's just yeah. one of those things. There's going to be a large amount of like you know overlap. It's so the Venn diagrams like this maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah. No, they don't check anything about that. I guess you're like not supposed to, and like the onus is on you not to. But it's not. They're not like they're like. Do you have a medical card? And in fact, like Missouri just said, fuck it. You don't even need a license to carry a gun anywhere. Like just throw that bad bitch in your pocket and like, <laughs> you know, stand your ground, homie. All right. Um, and there's cool. no way that's gonna end bad at all. It's just gonna be for, great. Everyone's for sure. There's a it lot sounds... of good guys with guns. That's why nobody gets shot here. Uh, sounds uh sounds promising sounds promising i'm super happy about all those things uh but i'm yeah. super glad that you like weed because i feel like a lot of people whenever i was growing up were not weed friendly and they're very judgy about it yeah that's what but we all smoked me, yeah. cigarettes i remember that very distinctly because you turned 18 like two months before me so you may or may not have purchased cigarettes for me <laughs> for at walmart months. at west mifflin walmart <laughs> maybe <laughs> And it was a great time. Um, but yeah, did you ever smoke cigarettes? I feel like I don't remember you actually smoking them. Oh, yeah, I did smoke cigarettes since I was like 12 or 13. Because yeah. like, what else do you do with like little guidance and a lot of time? Yep, same. I think I was like 15 the first time my sister gave me a cigarette in the parking lot of a football game. I think I was 15. We might have been 16 because she may have driven us there. I don't remember. I'll have to ask her. She could have just driven you when she was 15. Who's to stop her? <laughs> <laughs> but um, could have happened too. Yeah, I quit whenever I was like 25, finally. But, you know, whatever. <sighs> so what do you do in Missouri besides go to work? Is it like super boring? I can't picture a nightlife there. Uh, so downtown St. Louis, there was a little bit of a nightlife and then COVID happened and then it just became like street racing and shooting and Mad Max. So like, no, not much. Um, but you know, if you like the outdoors, there's a lot of things to do. There are so many parks. Uh, if you like museums, we have a ton of free museums. Our zoo is free. Our history and art museums free. We have free oh, public cool. 
that are outdoors. That's how Philadelphia um, is. A lot of downtown Philadelphia stuff is just free. You just roam around and look at the Liberty Bell and a bunch of old ass historical buildings for free. That's really cool. Yeah, it's great. And so we have Forest Park in St. Louis. It's actually like one and a quarter times the size of Central Park, despite being a way freaking smaller city. So oh. it's it's just a gem and you could do a lot there. Um, but other than that, I spend a lot of my time cycling uh, like on a bike, though I haven't got out this season. Um, and then, like, you know, I am in misery, but I have more money than I used to because I have a good job and I live about yeah. 15 minutes from an airport. So I travel places and that helps. Yeah, that sounds really fun. I do like having money now that I have like an, an adult job and all that good stuff. I was going to ask you something and I can't remember what I was going to ask you now. Oh, did our, did our class, I asked every person this now that I'm like reconnecting with people on Facebook, did our class have a reunion? We didn't have a reunion, did we? It would have happened in COVID, right? Did I miss it? Yeah. So I saw like somebody trying to set it up. Um, maybe it was Catherine Peterson or something on Facebook. Fuck, you keep saying these names and I'm like freak. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> a while to like load them too as soon as i see this i'm like all right let me pull out that yearbook and see if like 15 years ago face reminds me of who they are and <laughs> sometimes it does usually it doesn't but um no i that's not a bash on Catherine, but yeah uh she <laughs> i think she was trying to set it up or something um and again this was you know two years ago now so I don't think it happened. If it did, I wasn't there. And... I think um, <clears throat> I think part of my problem is the people that I reconnect with on Facebook are the other weirdos. So I don't think we would have been invited anyways. Maybe not. I don't know. I do remember. Um, I can't remember what year it was. I believe we were like freshmen. And at the time, the juniors girls were dating all the freshmen boys. And it was like a big deal to all. <laughs> to all the girls that like had opportunities to date boys um <laughs> me not being one of them because the junior girls were like taking all of the available boys i remember that being a big deal in high school i don't know why i remember that um, i also remember us being in mr madar's class together and i still love that guy to this day i do not speak to him i don't even think he knows i exist but i'm in love with that guy <laughs> Oh my God. He was so like enthusiastic. I remember just like running into him at like the movie theater a lot for some reason, like at the waterfront at Lowe's. Just be like, Mr. Mayor, I'd be like, what up? What you doing here? Like, you know, just as yeah. he was. And I remember like one time he was, um, he was substituting for Mr. Raffel or something. Um, and he I can't remember what it was. We were going over multiple choice. And one time the answer was C. And he's like, the answer is C. And he opens the hall, walks out, and he's like, C. <laughs> like, I'm about to bust a cap in your ass. <laughs> C. It just walked in and slammed the door. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> I loved everything about him. <laughs> he's just, he'd be like, uh. He'd be like, yeah, uh. That's the good ish. All That's the a good ish. I was about to pop a cap in your ass and just slams the door. And you're like, what? It's public school, but not that public school. <laughs> I was dying. I was, I loved, I loved every minute of every time I had with him because he was a sub for the district for like a long time before he got a permanent position. And that was like my favorite sub ever. And he is actually in a like a family photo from graduation day where like my family's <laughs> sitting on the bleachers smiling pretty and they're holding a digital camera right because we don't have smartphones <clears throat> and in behind them is Mr. Madar <laughs> so he's like in a photo that I have from graduation day but I just wanted to share that with the world he was an amazing person and I know that the way that we described him if you're a smidgen racist you probably think he's African-American but I assure you he is the whitest guy I've ever seen in my life <laughs> very white very very white <laughs> which I think is what made the good issues so and the bus of cap in your ass so funny <laughs> I'm gonna think about that for the next three weeks now um <laughs> it's so so awkwardly white <laughs> And I remember whenever he was subbing for somebody in, I think we might've been in middle school. And I asked, cause I 
have no filter and I think I might be on the spectrum. I just asked one day why he limped. And then he went on to explain like the saddest story in the world about he was T-boned by somebody and paralyzed like on his left side or something. And I was like, well, now I know not to ask those questions anymore. Thank you so much for that life lesson, Mr. Madar. I appreciate you taking the question in grace and making me feel horrible about it. (laughs) You know what? Like as a teacher though, I'm sure he's just like, kids are going to ask me all sorts of things and I have to be like (laughs) ready to be honest and prepared. So like good on him for actually just being like, you know what? You asked the question. (laughs) Yeah. Here's the answer. And like, did you get what you wanted out of it, Jerry? Did you? (laughs) Yeah. He was like, I'm going to bust a cap in your ass, but yeah. Um, (laughs) So yeah. Oh, I saw on the Google form that you said you're a software network security network engineer. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a network security engineer. So, so is that just making sure that the network is secure then? in in the yeah place that and you like work? the very highest levels yeah that is that is what i do like if if i was on wheel of fortune and you know they're like don't tell us everything you do but give us like a little bit of it like that's the that's the scope of it yeah <laughs> I, I make sure that we like enforce the right security controls for like getting on the network so network security yeah i had a, a software engineer network engineer i don't remember his title he was on here And he was talking about all the ways that uh, social media is used to like steal your information to like get into your passwords and stuff. And it's like a big pet peeve for him or something. And I was like, oh, I guess. But at the same time, I don't have anything worth stealing. So whatever, (laughs) you know. It's all good. (laughs) Like I had to recently file a police report about a person that was um, sending like threats through social media. My life's always a fun time. Wow, are are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine now. This is old news. And then, but I've never had to do that before, right? Because like, I, I don't know, social media is still a weird age to me. And then they're like, okay, well, we have to make sure, are they physical threats or financial threats? And I'm like, financial threats? And she's like, yeah, are they threatening to take your assets? And I was like, ma'am, I don't have financial assets. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts laughing and she's like, okay, so physical threats? And I was like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like... <laughs> I just, what's your uh, mother's maiden name i'm gonna steal all your credit scores <laughs> yeah like i have nothing i have nothing worth stealing i'm sure that that stuff is already available on the internet and they're just waiting for me to hit the lottery because there's nothing there they're like we gain nothing by stealing this woman's identity <laughs> so anyways do you like your job is that what you went to college for Yes. Well, I went to college for engineering and failed out one semester because like, you know, they didn't teach us math in high school. I mean, you're good at math. So like, but did you learn it after high school? Be honest. I learned a lot of math in high school. I then proceeded to forget it from a lot of binge drinking. And then I relearned it in college. Okay. (laughs) Well, you know, without the binge drinking, I never really learned the math in high school. So um, (laughs) good for you on like, recovering the math and from binge drinking that's cool. yeah 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 for sure yeah um but no i went for engineering i uh couldn't do math you kind of need math to be an engineer but well i think for IT, for engineering majors what did you have you did you struggle in calculus yeah they like try to weed you out and they're like you can't use a calculator which is such bullshit like the world uses computers now yeah 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 i'm definitely um a pro believer in math is about solving problems, not doing calculations in your head. But at the same time, as a math major slash stats major, I never owned a calculator. I felt like I would then, because I tutored students. So then I felt like I was being an alcohol counselor coming with a bottle of alcohol if I brought the calculator. But Uh, that's just a me thing. I don't think everybody else needs to be like that. (laughs) It probably depends on like your audience and like what you're teaching. Cause like for some like younger people, it's probably like really appropriate to teach them how to think. And then yeah. like older people, like, you know, what's the value that you're solving for versus how you get there? That might be important. But yeah, like, exactly. That's what I always promote is like, however you need to get there is how you get there, dude. We're all in this together. As the great one, Zach Efron once said. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> So you failed out of engineering Um, for, so you were going to say for IT, I'm assuming what you just needed, like your regular prereqs for math to get into IT. Is that like algebra? 
Yeah. And I think because like an I took intro like, to stats course or something. Yeah. And I took like college level algebra in high school. Cause we had like great college and high school opportunities yep. and dual yep. enrollment. So, um, I knocked out a lot of like the algebra one and algebra two while I was in high school for college. Um, and then I actually had college and high school calculus from Pitt, but Penn State still wanted you to like redo it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And I wanted to redo it because I wasn't ready for Calc 2 uh, and I failed Calc 1 again. So really wasn't ready for it. So uh, where was I, I feel like uh, the college, sorry, I don't know where we were going anymore, but I'm stuck on this tangent now. I feel like sure. the college and high school stuff that they promote in a lot of high schools is usually a scam. And I dropped out of college and high school calculus my senior year for that reason, because you had to go to Pitt. And I was like, I don't even think I want to go to college. Nonetheless, Pitt University, that place is so hard to get into and it's so fucking expensive. And I'm so glad that I dropped out of that class because you had to pay hundreds of dollars to take that class because you got credit for Pitt University, which is like an elitist school. And I never used that. I used calculus for sure, but I did I did calculus at community college for like $47. <laughs> That's much more affordable. <laughs> so um yeah, that's my whole soapbox on college and high school courses. You can continue on now. I think you were going to talk about math as an IT person. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's about as far as math as I had to go. Um, and, you know, as a Penn Stater, let's just shit on Pitt for a second. So uh, <laughs> Pitt is one of those schools, like, I I took courses at, in college, college and high school thing from Penn State professors who are also Pitt professors because, like, you know, it's very incestuous. And the Penn, the Penn State professors would always complain that like, you know, I teach this here and I teach it at Pitt, but if you take it at Pitt, be careful about where you transfer to, because if you do two years at this campus and then two years at another Pitt campus, they might not accept their own credits. Yep. <laughs> And I'm like, what? And he's like, but any Penn State school you go to, like, transfer to any of them. They'll take your credits from <laughs> one school here to this school there to that. But yep. Pitt considers themselves separate. They're too elite for their own good. Yep. So. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> That's how universities are. Like, the U.S. or sorry, the UC system, the University of California is different than California State in the same exact ways. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Pitt U and University of California run on quarter systems, which is just a nice way to say that they want their students to either die or graduate from college or come out as drug addicts. So, um, <clears throat> because now instead of like a 16 week semester, I think a quarter is like 10. So your semester is almost cut in half and you have to do four of those That's per like a year instead session. of like two summers. Yeah or two semesters and it's just hideous dude it's totally fucking hideous i almost went to the university of california because again it's like oh that's where you have to go that's, <laughs> that's the elite school and um i ended up going to california state and i have like almost no student loans so i'm very thankful um yeah i have a whole a whole soapbox about college that i could go on and on forever about Quarters but penn state sounds fun yes they're the worst everybody that i know that went to you to ucsc like literally does drugs actively all day. And I don't mean marijuana because I don't even consider that a drug anymore. Uh, it's like the real thing. <laughs> like <laughs> They're actively on drugs every day to get through school because they cannot sleep until the quarter ends. <laughs> so <laughs> um, anyways, Pitt State, Penn State sounds fun. You went to Penn State, Maine, like in the center of Pennsylvania? Yes. Was it a super fun town? Everybody that I know that went to Penn State proper had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was nice. Um, I like that it was like a, a mini break into adulthood. That's to say like you're all treated like adults, but because you're like literally in the middle of nowhere and it's just like college students, like if you get into any sort of trouble there, like in the town, they kind of handle it through the school because they're like, oh, you're just a school kid. So yeah. you got treated as like half an adult and you could like make mistakes without getting in trouble and like, you know, have a lot of fun um with some guardrails but it was not everybody up there was like your age or they were like families that had mom or dad or someone that worked at the university so it was just everybody had something in common to begin with and when you have like 90,000 people with something in common and <clears throat> the rest of the world's kind of bubbled outside of you it's just a lot of fun yeah 
were you i don't remember when the whole uh i was there uh, i love <laughs> yes. that you read my mind <laughs> yes i, I was remember there his last name was it sandusky sandusky that's yeah. who it was because we had a principal with like a similar last name right it was like um our Sam Dusky or something yeah it was like our senior Sadesky. year Sadesky, that's what it was because yeah. Bolin left I remember loving was his name Bolin Bowler Bolin yeah I think it was Bolin he left and then the new, anyways so you you attended that school when that happened I couldn't remember if we were in high school or out of high school at that point yeah so it happened in like uh 2011 ish okay. 2012 well yeah 2011 2012 sort of time frame so um gosh I would have been I don't think I was a freshman I think I was like a sophomore in college and um it was not a lot of fun uh it was really interesting to see what the media was there for and what they were making it out to be and um how people felt they were being portrayed in town unfairly like hey a lot of this stuff happened a long time ago like you know we're not all students just up here for football it might look like that but like when this stuff happened we were probably like six years old too so yeah. like you know we're all about football now but it's not about like you know football above everything like let's forgive this it's like we're all hearing about this now just as you are and nobody really yeah. likes it like let's get this guy in jail and let's get some accountability let the heads roll who need to let's figure out the truth and yeah um, I, I remember would have been like I, I remember not like I had no effect on me at all um but that's mainly because I was partying like daily and uh but I know that as a college student I would be like pissed just generally for the inconvenience like I'm trying to pass college which is really fucking hard yeah you know, like all these people are acting stupid on campus like i would just be so upset about all of it it would put a huge disruption into my whole thing to get through life and people do get tired of the spectacle and unfortunately when they got tired of the spectacle they started like riding and flipping like news vans because it's like you know media get out which like let me tell you, it does not get you painted in a more positive light. <laughs> they definitely go like, these kids are all about football partying. They're angry above else, you know, screw the kids. And it's like, no, I mean, we're angry about a lot of things. We're angry this is happening and all this stuff's in a bad light. This is a hard situation for everybody dealing with like that type of news. And, you know, so um, yeah, the Sandusky suck stuff sucked um especially for the victims that had to like relive a lot of that publicity too so yep, yep. i want to make sure it's more than just about like boohoo is inconvenient for college um there's a lot more than that yeah yeah for sure it all sounded bad that's amazing that you lived through history though yeah, there's um, a South Park episode, and then I moved to oh, St. Really? Louis. Yeah, then I then I moved to St. Louis, and Ferguson happened, and we got another South Park episode. So what is Ferguson? I feel so out of loop. I literally don't uh, watch the news. Okay, so Ferguson, that was like the whole Michael Brown, like one of the beginnings of like Black Lives Matters and racial oh, equity protests. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, in like 2014. Okay. Um, I get it. Now. So yeah, it was. That uh, sounds. I, that sounds really cool. That like South Park episodes just follow you wherever you go. It's not cool because it's always like <laughs> making fun about like, you know, the misgivings and follies of society. It's just, you know, you're like, oh, hey, here's like this big, um, you know, racial event and police killing. Like, that's not fun to have a protest about. Um, Very true. Uh, or like the Sandusky stuff, not fun. Although the South Park episodes for both of them were great. Like, not even going to lie. They were <laughs> great South Park episodes, but they satire what's going on pretty well in the world. Yeah, they must have amazing writers. I remember whenever I got into World of Warcraft for a minute and uh, everyone in my life, like everybody has that same experience, I feel like. Uh, and then you watch the South Park episode of it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so true. Like, that's how I felt. If only my mom would bring me Hot Pockets and Ben Gay, that would have been way cooler. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like... <laughs> Were you, speaking of uh, World of Warcraft and moms bringing Hot Pockets, were you ever around after our house burned down and we moved to a new house where we then lived by Max School and Lindsay something? She's now Lindsay yeah. School because they got married. And we would have Guitar Hero parties in the basement. Yeah. And then I remember like <laughs> that was the same street where they had like uh, horses and sleighs go down and Christmas. Probably. Is that right? Probably. Like, by and the, there was by a the house, middle school kind of. There was a house that would like, 
um, have lights to the playing of music or whatever during Christmas time. Was that on your street within the new yeah. house? Okay, yeah. yeah the, and we were really school. close to like bar 48. It's like that red barn is like at the end of that street. Uh, yeah. Back when it was Pasternak's though. <laughs> I never went there whenever it was Pasternak's. I went there whenever it was Bar 48 for sure. But I forgot that it was called Pasternak's until you just said that. Um, And I remember I worked at the Kogos right down the street from there. And I worked the overnight shift, which is just, it brings a whole new light to Elizabeth when you work overnight at Kogos, I must say. (laughs) Um, But yeah, you would see like all kinds of people from high school coming in there in all sorts of not good ways. Just there for the pepperoni rolls. (laughs) <laughs> like I'm Turner's just here for the pepperoni tea. rolls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I miss the Turner's. Don't even get started. <laughs> Can't get that here. So, but besides that, brings me to an excellent uh, point. Does M- Missouri have? Fuck, I can't talk. Do you have food that you miss from Pittsburgh that's not in Missouri? Permani Brothers. A lot of Permani Brothers. Same. I'm um, so happy you said that. <laughs> oh, so I took my partner to St. Louis, or to, not St. Louis because he's from here, but to Pittsburgh for the first time over last Thanksgiving. Huh. And as soon as we got like off the plane, like my dad came to pick us up. And he's like, are you hungry? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, should we go to Permani's? I'm hungry. And I was like, yes. Yeah. So like first thing when I get off the airplane, a lot of times there's Permani's involved. Yes. I took my husband there whenever we flew before he was my husband. Cause I was like, we've been together for a long time and you have to meet my family eventually, even though they're semi-racist against brown people. And he was like, how okay, did that fine, work out? I mean, <laughs> was it okay? Um, yeah, it's fine. it's fine. I mean, they watch all these episodes, so they hear Misha talking to them a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I still love them so much. You guys are the best and you've come a long way. Um, so yeah, there's still comments and jokes made that aren't as funny as they think they are, but it's fine. I get over it because I live 3000 miles away from them, but it was fine. He loved Pittsburgh. He loved the sports really. Um, he's a big sports guy. So he loved seeing a whole town love it so fucking much that they are like literally depressed. And it feels like the weather changes when the Steelers lose. He loved that magic. Um, and he loved Permani Brothers because we did the same thing. I was like, day one, Permani Brothers. I haven't had it in so long. We got to go. And then um, we ended up eating there two or three more times in the week that we were there because he was obsessed with it. And whenever I was pregnant with my second kid, I was like, Chris, I will pay any money if you find a way to get Permani Brothers to this house right now. I swear to God. And he tried his best and couldn't. There's no way. Um, sandwiches so, don't travel well apparently but i they have, do have online kits now but i think you have to pay like 60 bucks so and then like, you'd have to do the work to and it wouldn't be the same yeah, i want no, like the old sweaty italian man <laughs> from Manny brothers on the strip district <laughs> to make my sandwich for me <laughs> that is a long door dash ride <laughs> <laughs> but i have to cut i have to circle back to the fact that you said that you took your partner and he did something and can, can i ask questions about that now yeah sure Okay, you did not put anything down in the form about this, so now I'm very, very curious. When did that start? Uh, 2017, 2018. Shit, we just had a four-year anniversary, so like you That's can a do long math, math major. That's a really long time. So did was did you always know that there would be a, a he partner in your future? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Figure it out later on, but <laughs> <laughs> is it only he's or is it like a you like the wine, not the label situation? Uh, only he's. Oh, interesting. This is answering a lot of questions right now in my head. Okay. Um, <laughs> like flipping through all the memories. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have, um, but we don't have to discuss all those memories here. Um, I have a photo on my one of my first Facebook photos is photos is us at like a winter form, winter formal, maybe probably did you just not so are you not out am i like no i'm out yeah i'm out okay okay so then this is so exciting i have nine thousand questions now um (laughs) when did you tell your family if you don't want to talk about this sometime no i'm I'm just like actually thinking because i'm like shit when did i um we'll move on and i'll just text you about it later I think it was, yeah, it was like sometime after college when I moved to St. Louis and I found like my first partner down here. And then we were like traveling everywhere. You don't just like travel to Spain randomly with someone you're not dating. So, (laughs) I mean, maybe you do, but if you do, like, let me know these people because I need travel buddies. Okay. I, 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 yeah, that does sound pretty fun. Um, travel. Yeah. My husband doesn't like flying. I need travel buddies as well. Okay. okay so then we go, we're going <laughs> any like yeah like literally anywhere um we'll just have our own high school reunion full of weirdos 
um that's like way too late because it already passed my next question is did you not feel comfortable in high school about it or were you just questioning in high school uh probably like a little bit of both I mean like we went to a really small high school and like it's not I don't know it's probably more progressive now than it was then but yes. like we probably like okay so we had a school of like a thousand people and we probably only max. had like, like yeah a thousand people max and we probably had like you know, half a dozen to a dozen people of color and a lot I of was them were say like two. cousins. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Well, no, and, a, and, and that's not even like a joke. Like yeah. but a lot of them, like the African-Americans and such and the like, you know, they were cousins maybe or yeah. like the two Asian kids we had were brothers. Um, I don't even remember Asian kids. Well, Interesting. there was two of them out of a thousand <laughs> and it's, you, you know, it's, it's a very low numbers game. So it's not the most diverse place in the world, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, um, for sure. And, yeah. I mean, it's the type of place, like I was back there like over Christmas and I think I saw like uh, a deer and uh, this is around Forward Township, but I saw like a deer mounted to a telephone pole with like a red nose strapped to it and then like a Confederate flag <laughs> oh, above my. it. And you know, like it's not funny, but it's kind of funny. You're just like, holy shit, like we're in that redneck of an area. Like somebody yeah. found roadkill Rudolph and the South is yep. going to rise again. There's a window <laughs> curtain, but like whatever. Yeah, except it's in Pittsburgh pennsylvania where the south never rose to begin with but it's fine yeah just um <laughs> curtain, you know because somehow that's what drapes are in those necks of the woods but you know neither here nor there yeah i feel like there was um there were definitely gay people in high school but i did not know them and they were there were people that were actively made fun of and rumored to be gay so then you had to be extra not gay um or else you would be picked on for being gay that was my perspective i ended up working at a retail place with somebody I worked well I don't know why I said a retail place I worked at Walgreens for like a long time and Chris Cordero worked there with me and then I found out that he was gay even though we went to high school together forever and then through him I found out all of the other gay guys that he had dated in high school <laughs> I was like wow this is just mind-blowing right now um but yeah I had to like leave high school go work at Best Buy to actually see gay people in real life lo loving and accepting themselves and then we all went to gay clubs all the time that's together what, that's what nerds do there's so many like gay nerds and technology so many queer people and like that are nerds i love it my um the the two episodes before this was with a math professor that i had and i never even had him as a professor i just know him and he's gay but he went to the he works at the college i went to but yeah he did say the something similar there are a lot of nerdy math people i mean sorry nerdy gay people <laughs> Not nerdy math people. Um, all nerds, there's all lots of those too. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. But yeah, that's just like so fascinating. Did you ever go to any gay clubs in Pittsburgh? Once, like as a adult coming back, I can't even remember what it was. It was just like not even fun. But so I think it like changed. It's on the strip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there. It's called like uh, Crush Splash. One of those very Chrome, cliche. I don't forget. One, of those, <laughs> like one of those cliche names. So whenever I was going and I was like 17, 18, 19 were like the years that I would go. Um, there was a place called Pegasus and you had to know where it was to get there because they would get beat up outside. It's like super sad. So um, yeah, that's where we went every weekend. And it was literally like outside of the city in a very sketchy neighborhood. And it was just a giant building with like the rave lights coming out of the windows on the top. And there was a giant Pegasus horse painted on it. That's why they called it the Pegasus. Um, <laughs> and so if you were under age, you could go on like Thursdays and Fridays and they would only serve alcohol at like one bar and they would put giant X's on your hands or something like that. And then we would drive all the way to West Virginia to go to them on the weekends because they would let underage people in on the weekends. And again, it would be like only one bar is serving alcohol and you have like giant neon yeah. wristbands on or something. Kids stay downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it didn't matter because we were just drinking in the car on the way there and after and during and all that stuff. So um, it was yeah, probably- save the money. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was probably the funnest time of my life. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, by the time I remember Chris Cordero took me to some gay club on the strip whenever he turned 18, maybe, or maybe it was for his 19th birthday. I don't know. I don't talk to him anymore. Um, yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. Anyways, I got stuck on that. I'll probably have 9,000 more questions to ask you later. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. Is there like a large gay community in St. Louis? Is it like friendly, like Austin, Texas, or is it like not friendly? 
I mean, like, it's the Midwest. It's like, you know, people are... So that's to say it's not like a large community. People are very friendly here okay. um, in, in most areas. At least, like, when you're in St. Louis, you're talking about you're in a metropolitan area. You go across the river in either direction, you start, like, having different conversations about that. But, um, it, you know, um, where there's a large amount of people, you usually find more tolerant people. And there's, like, an large-ish amount of people in St. Louis. It's, I, I don't know, not the biggest metro area, but it's not the smallest. Very cool. Very cool. Have you heard of, I learned of this through a YouTube channel. Have you heard of the, um, the, <laughs> the stamps of approval, I guess you would call them, as like gold star gay, platinum star gay, they go down? I only know of like gold star Okay, so a platinum gay would be a person that was born via C section. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Okay. My, my barber is a gay man and I am in love with him. He's amazing. Uh, he does wonderful things to my hair, even though you can't tell because I never do anything with it. And <laughs> he was saying that I told him about this and he was like, Oh, I did not know this was a thing. So then he goes home and talks to his partner and he's like, Yeah, I'm a platinum gay because I uh my i was born via c-section right and he's like i learned this thing and his boyfriend was like oh no you didn't you fingered a vagina once you're a gold star and he was like what the fuck i get knocked down a peg <laughs> you know can you even be a gold star then like i just oh you're like no stars <laughs> zero stars that's a, sorry i'm sure was, he's a great person that's, that's what i was like cracking up about the other day that's the kind of stuff we talk about when i get my hair cut <laughs> um <laughs> and died but uh, I always love, I don't know what comes lower than gold star. Is it just no stars then? You just go yeah, from gold, I mean, like, gold or nothing, no dice. So, uh, yeah, I don't think you could go from platinum to gold. I think you're like either gold or platinum. Like you don't get to get knocked down. Like you're zero at that point. You touched a woman, like you're out of gold territory. <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> no touching. So then I would assume that you don't get your gold star stamp then. Is that correct? No, I don't get a gold star. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, I'm a little hoe. <laughs> Speaking from experience, I don't think you get the gold star stamp. Um, but I guess, well, yeah, I guess it depends on who you ask. Um, it's a whole thing. So yeah. are, are you friends with anybody else in high school? From high school? Are you, do you still stay in contact with anybody else? A couple occasionally, yeah. So like Britt Ross, she was a year ahead of us. Court oh, Mashers. Um, I'm oh, trying to think yeah. of else who I they, when I was in marching band, they were in color guard, um, and they did uh, color guard when I did indoor percussion. So you know, like music weirdos. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah, that's what we all are. We're like weird band kids. So yeah. Um, oh God, I remember everybody being in love with Art Bernazzi whenever he came to high school. Do you remember that? His yeah, glow up. Every, mm-hmm. <laughs> And his Cute. and his his little swoop. People yeah, loved it. he he had a lot of charisma, and he made people feel like you know he he's just a uh, art was a nice guy. Yeah, he's still, I were- he's still alive. He is a nice guy. <laughs> At least I hope he's still a nice guy, and I hope he's still alive. Or if you're out there, I hope you are one yes. alive and two not an asshole. You never yeah. were. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was not cool enough to be on his radar in high school, but then we worked at Kogos together, <laughs> and he would just became like the classic grungy band kid. Uh which is like right up my alley and the way that I um ended up like being in his circle to begin with was I was like sleeping with one of his ex-bandmates named Wes who lived by Kennywood (laughs) (laughs) but I must say great story so far yeah (laughs) because I was also a little hoe I don't think that's news to anybody um in life but um what was I gonna say Oh, you were sleeping Brad? with Art's bandmate. <laughs> yes, was, but I don't <laughs> think Brad was very nice. Was him and Brad related? I think they were cousins. So okay. I remember, like, I was in marching band with his sister Sarah Brunazzi, and then oh, I forgot um, about her. Okay, yeah, and then like a year or two later, as Art like aged into high school, then he was in it too, and we were all in like a uh, pit percussion. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I hung out with them in that context and his sister, but I do believe that Brad um, is their cousin. Okay. Yeah. It was, he was a very unfortunate person. Um, if he's out there and for some odd reason listens to this, I hope he knows that he was a terrible person and I don't like anything about him. Um, <laughs> other than that, he might be related to art and art was a really cool guy, but um, 
yeah, I don't really keep in touch with anybody. I ended up finding people through Facebook, like from the very one of my first pictures with you in a winter formal. That's how I found you on Facebook. And then like May is friends with more people than I am from high school on Facebook. And then they end up friend requesting me. And then I'm like, well, um, I'm still friends with Brianna because we've been friends for fucking ever. Um, even though we literally have nothing in common, we're still friends and we still like each other. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Like my cousin, Sam, cause we're like family. So we're friends on Facebook and then other people started friending me after I became friends with her. But yeah, I don't really like keep up with anybody. I don't know. I just hate that whole area. I hate it all. I don't even go back to visit. I can't, I don't have any energy or mental capacity to see any of those people again. So I just, I cannot, I went yeah. like, I went and visited every year after I first moved to California for like the first four years that I moved here. And then it was like, I took my husband on year three and then I saw Pittsburgh in this cool new light. So I went back the year after and I thought I would have a fun time. And I was just like, fuck, the same people are still here in the giant eagle fucking off of Lovedale. <laughs> the oh, same people are still in Kobo's, right? Like, <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to go there and then just like, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. And a lot of times it's good, but sometimes I just want to get like, you know, a box of Malamars, which you cannot find in St. Louis and definitely <laughs> probably cannot find. Well, you can a little bit, but it's hard. Um I just want to go to the grocery store and grab food sometimes, you know, to talk to everyone. And, and also, why are you still here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I cannot, I cannot stand to look at any of it any longer. It's just like so much bad things. Yeah, I have no good feelings about that place at all. I guess downtown Pittsburgh is really fun. Whenever I went with Chris and, you know, there's like all the sports things, there's a casino, there's like the science center and the zoo and all that shit kennywood's cool but it's in like the shittiest of shitty neighborhoods you'll ever be in in your Kennywood entire life is in a very sketchy area. it's it's the sketchiest of the sketchy like literally the wrong side of the tracks you have to lock all your doors immediately once you enter the town do not get yeah. out do not pass go go straight to kennywood <laughs> It's funny because you mentioned it's on the wrong side of the tracks. Like the other side of the tracks is the river and being in the river is probably better than being in the neighborhood. It is, even though murders happen in the river all the time. Yeah. The, <laughs> the stats are much lower in the river than they are in the neighborhood. So yeah, I cannot, I cannot even, and I'm pretty sure because my dad doesn't even live there anymore. My dad moved to Delaware. What's he doing in Delaware? Delaware is for corporations. <laughs> Uh, well, my dad is pretty sure that Delaware is the best state available in the United States. And um, he just, he got a super cheap house and it's not Pittsburgh. So he just like flips houses and makes money that way. And uh, my stepmom works for the post office now down in Delaware. Um, yeah. So the only people left in Pittsburgh is like my sister. So I don't talk to May like hardly ever. We keep up on Facebook, but my my like half sister Michelle lives in Pittsburgh and I have one, I think I have one brother left there. Cause he, yeah, he's the oldest. And I think he's pretty much going to live there until he dies. But yeah. So I just really have no reason to come to go back. Like me and Michelle just went to Vegas for our 30th. Cause we're only like 10 days apart. So, so lucky. I love Vegas. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, yeah, I'm always down to go to Vegas. It's like an eight hour drive for me. So yeah. Anyways, house 30. Uh, it's already one we'll end soon but how's 30 it's a uh, it's going all right um geez i just turned 30 in january so uh, i'd say it's only going uphill because things are like finally starting to open and you know i think you a lot of people feel more comfortable to travel confidently and to yeah. go to events and so um you know one I like going out to that stuff. So that's wonderful. And two, now that everybody is like starting to get back out, I think um, people are going to start treating each other nicer. People are going to start going back to normal and, you know, maybe the world will be just a little bit brighter once people get back into what they were used to before. So. Yeah, for sure. I feel the same way, but I feel like I had an existential crisis right before and now um, because now I'm like, Oh, I'm just like this now right like <laughs> like whatever i have going on like it, that's just my personality at this point i can't just say like oh i'm a shit tier 20 year old anymore like i'm just a mess now right like yeah, yeah. this is part of me for <laughs> ever forever <laughs> yeah yep yeah, yeah. so that can be a good thing at times because i feel like i was much worse of a person like 
back whenever I lived in Pittsburgh. So I've definitely like grown up a lot and I'm okay with most of it, but other parts I'm like, oh, I wish I could have changed that before I turned 30. Cause now I'm stuck with that part of me, I guess. <laughs> like- so, you know, <laughs> here's my perspective on that. Like you're not really like fully developed until you're like 25 anyway, like mentally from like a neurological yeah. standpoint. So like, just remember before you were 25, like you were just brain damaged. Yeah. That's how I feel like and- on so many levels. Yes. Yeah. So like, you know, give yourself a little bit grace there. Like the last five years though, that's all your fault. Yeah, for sure. That's <laughs> what I mean. like, you <laughs> fucked up the last five years if you fucked up. No, yeah. But, um, you, you can't take things back, but all the shitty things that you might've done or the shitty ways you felt about yourself probably made you like the person you are today. And I think you're pretty cool. Oh, thanks. You too. You should be a therapist. You're really good at this. Um, uh, you know, my second major was psychology, but I don't think anybody should be paying for my time. I'd just be like, you know what? Why don't you shut the hell up? And, you know, some days I'm positive. Some days it's just, you, know, you have yes. to have the right personality. And I do not have that 40 hours a week. Nope. 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 Oh, you're, um, you're January. So I, I'm pretty sure you're like an Aquarius. Oh, well, when in January were you born early or late? The 11th. Yeah, so that you're probably like a Capricorn then. I am a Capricorn. Yeah, I'm really into astrology because I'm a California hippie. It's very cliche. Nice. Um, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm a Pisces. Um, yeah, my grandma's a Capricorn. I think that's why we get along a lot. Uh, most of my family is um, like Aquarius and Aries. And I feel like Aquarius are just so suffocating fuckers. <laughs> um, like I can't even. And I dated a lot of them like before I got to my husband. So yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, I don't want to take forever and ever and ever, but I have random questions that I ask at the end of every episode. Can I ask them before we go? Sure, why not? They have nothing to do with anything we've ever talked about. Perfect. Do you know anything about Winnie the Pooh? Yeah. Okay, do you have a Winnie the Pooh character that you identify with? Um, Kenny Loggins, because he sings about Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> you know, uh, I, like, I like Eeyore. Eeyore's just like... Uh... And sometimes I'm like, uh... I didn't know anybody knew that song. That's amazing. <laughs> Christopher. Now I'm not going to sing. It's just bad for everybody. But no, like we can return to Pooh Corner. Yeah. <laughs> I do definitely feel like an Eeyore. Um, I have Eeyore tattooed on my foot. Do you have any tattoos? No. Um, okay. I'm too indecisive. I like tattoos on other people. Uh, if I could find one on me that I liked enough, I might get one. But then I'm also probably like too much of a little bitch to get poked with needles over and over again. So Interesting. Um, okay. yeah, they're cool on other people, but not on me right now. Awesome. Um, that wasn't one. I, it just made me think of it whenever I thought about my tattoo. You're like, I have uh, your tattoo. Do you have tattoos? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's another one that we ask a lot? Oh, do you have a favorite spice? Mm, posh that's not a spice is it oh so that was my <laughs> next question was a favorite spice girl <laughs> yeah we always ask your favorite spice girl and your favorite spice i don't know anything about spice girls other than there's a spice girl named jerry because that's me <laughs> there's a jerry there's a which one's jerry is she she's that... scary i think isn't jerry yeah scary i think spice? jerry's scary which one's posh victoria beckham that's posh oh okay okay yeah i can get into that because i like her husband well i guess she's pretty hot too i like all people um yeah. <laughs> you're like they're just all amazing yeah i definitely identify as a pansexual person because i like all. i would all i would people. bend it like beckham yeah <laughs> 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 so <laughs> what are some other good ones i can't remember all the random questions i asked do you have a favorite color blue interesting oh you're wearing i'm blue wearing today. it <laughs> <laughs> um because you went through the this oh do you actually have a favorite spice though like that you eat oh no i don't i don't okay. think i have a favorite spice cool i'm I've just like really random so boring i i don't even like really spice my food i like you're just like are, salt salt's my favorite spice <laughs> yeah like i am just incredibly white like okay. salt <laughs> like don't even use pepper other people like i give them options to people and I'm like, I will not be offended if you season the shit out of whatever I cook. Cause I know I didn't. <laughs> I'm the person that instantly salt and peppers any plate in front of me. I have not tasted it. I have not ever eaten it before, but I am going to put salt and pepper on it. Perfect. Because I didn't. <laughs> I don't know like why that's a thing in my brain, but it is. It's just a habit that I have to do. Cause if I don't do it, then I'm going to eat it. And then I'm going to have to ask somebody to pass the salt and pepper and my anxiety will be through the roof at that point. And so I just have to do it right off the bat. And yeah, if do you it's wanna, too much like salt, salt, salt through much your work, tongue? What? 
you just want to throw like salt on your tongue like i didn't do it (laughs) that's just weird you gotta have it first right yeah exactly so (laughs) yeah it's a whole thing um and then if it's too much salt or too much pepper then i'm forced with my own decisions and then it's kind of good right because i'm not like oh this food is terrible you're a horrible cook it's like oh no i fucked up i put too much salt on this (laughs) all my fault (laughs) yeah it's all my fault uh have you seen Encanto? The newest Disney movie, new ish. No, I haven't. I keep on being told I need to, though. It and is really, really, really good, especially for like family toxicity. Have you seen any of the new ones like Luca or like Turning Red just came out? Are you a Disney fan? That's where I, I am a Disney fan. I have not seen the most recent ones. I think the last, oh God, what was the last Disney thing I saw? It was the one where they like basically played Dungeons and Dragons. Onward. Um, yeah, that one yeah yeah you don't have kids though right no okay i was gonna say if you have kids you're really good at not sharing it (laughs) so i think that's kids you have to have disney movies but (laughs) yeah um, that's what i was gonna say i feel like once you have kids you're really kept up on all of them all the time because you're forced to watch every single new one 1200 times before the next one comes out so yeah like right now we're just watching turning red over and over and over again but i must say that uh, like all the new ones like onward Encanto, turning red luca they're all like fabulous that's not like old school disney there's like diversity people of color like different um i feel like they're not really good at the different sexuality thing yet but you know disney's no. like slowly crawling out of conservatism <laughs> they're slowly coming out they're like look relax we just put colombians in a disney movie you need to calm down <laughs> like, look not even a hundred years ago they had like an anti-semite running the place yeah, like there's yeah. some progress it's, <laughs> albeit yeah. slow there's progress <laughs> exactly so like every once in a while in like a marvel or in a star wars one not a true disney a marvel or or a star wars will have like a hint at a gay or lesbian thing going on like uh, two ladies will kiss in the background or like you know Mm -hmm. i think in the newest in the newest marvel not newest newer marvel movie the eternals there is a homosexuality that happens i don't know if you've seen it so i don't want to spoil it for you but um i thought that was is it a marvel yeah promise me you won't like yell at me but i'm always afraid to tell people no 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 no. i'm always like honestly afraid of like when game of thrones was out and people be like did you ask it i would get like loki scared because if you tell them no you get what hell have you not seen game of thrones and the same thing happened with all the avengers stuff and i'm like i don't follow marvel movies what do you mean you haven't seen avengers endgame and so like i'm a little afraid to say like i don't watch them I don't dislike them. I just like, I'm not up to it like everybody else is. And I'll see like occasional ones here and there and they're not coherent. And uh-uh. everybody's like, you're a fucking failure is what you are. Like that seriously, people shame you. And I've talked to other people who are like, I'm afraid to tell other people we should really get a support group. It is a, I don't, I try not to judge any human ever. It is really funny that you don't see them, but then I realize the commitment that you have to have to really keep up with all of them. Like literally 15 years of movies. If you don't, I don't even know when the first Iron Man came out, probably longer than 15 years. And I believe they're up to like 27 movies now. <laughs> plus and then like the time shows. two or three hours. Yeah. Plus the shows that they've added in. So it is a lot. We just, uh, me and Chris went and saw the newest Spider-Man that just came out like a month ago or two months. I don't know when it came out. Um, we went and saw it like twice in theaters because that's how we are. And then it came available to buy. So then we bought it because again, that's how we are. And so then we had a movie night for everyone else that hasn't seen it. So we all sit down to watch it, right? And then <laughs> my sweet grandma is like, is like, wait, is he playing Tony Stark now? And we're like, no. And she's like, where's Tony Stark? So then we have to pause <laughs> it. And we're like, spoiler alert for anybody that doesn't want to hear this. He dies, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he dies. Uh, and then she's like, what? When did he die? And we're like, he died approximately four to five movies ago. And she's like, what? <laughs> and and like, like, That's like yes. seven years, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, like It was a while ago. And then, yeah, so then I totally get that it, you can't just watch like one here and there. It's like a whole thing or you're like really lost. I also had a, uh, my sister like didn't watch Guardians of the Galaxy or something. And then her whole shit was thrown through a loop. She couldn't keep up with any of them. 
so yeah it's a, it's a very large commitment you really have to be in it to win it and we are very much in it to win it for quarantine actually that was the first thing we did was just watch there was 22 at the time we watched all of them from beginning to end <laughs> you're like this is great like we only have seven <clears throat> days to stop the spread we can get through this <laughs> <laughs> that's such a sad joke um <laughs> is that what it was was it seven or like something like that yeah exactly. remember it didn't work spoiler alert if you're watching this podcast and the it didn't, it didn't work um are you a book reader uh yes but don't ask me what i've read recently because i haven't read anything <laughs> recently although i did listen to like the 1619 project audiobook and like let me tell you, it's very eye-opening, but don't listen to that before bed. It's just like, you know. Write it down. Um, I love audiobooks. That's the only way I consume books, kind of. I read to my son, so I read physical books for that, but I'm a huge audiobook reader. Do you have a favorite? Oh, God, recently? Just mm. in general. I really like sci-fi in general, Same. and... One of the best sci-fi books that like, you know, maybe not one of the best, but one of the, that I think of often enough, um, besides like just in general, I like Philip K. Dick. Uh, it's by Steve Tutelini, I think. And it was called Join, J-O-I-N. Um, okay. And the premise about it is like, there's, you know, people want to be immortal and there's no such thing as like true immortality in your own body, but you could join with like other people's Ooh. minds. And so like everybody in there, like you have your own body and your own self, but then you have like a collective self with the people you're joined with. And so like, you know, they kind of analyzed it in a way that like, uh, people would join for all sorts of different reasons. Like, Hey, maybe I'll join, like maybe this rich older couple wants to join with like a young fit person so they can remain married for another like 40 years while this like you know athlete keeps their mind alive and their bodies died or whatever and that's I amazing know. i want to read it right now i'm yeah, adding into the list for sure as far as um sci-fi books go the first thing that came to my mind whenever you said that was ender's game which is a movie but if you liked the movie and you want to feel more pain and heartache, the book is amazing. <laughs> I did read the book. Yeah. I felt like I watched the movie and I was like, this is amazing. I have to read the book. And I read it and I was like, mm, should not have done that. But I'm they glad I forget did. they're like seven. Yeah. Yeah. In the movie, they were not seven. <laughs> no, but like in the book, you're like, are you nine? Why are you calling each other like a fart sniffer? And then you're like, oh yeah, you're nine. <laughs> yeah. It's so much more heartbreaking. And I think it's a series. I just never read anymore because I emotionally couldn't handle it. But now I, I kind of think I want to because I've done so many books at this point. I'm almost like numb to emotions. <laughs> I don't know if I've like gone too far, but yeah, it does take a lot for me to really like, like wholly commit my feelings to a book these days because I just consume so many audiobooks at work. Anyways, I'll let you go. Thank you for doing the show because I, I know it's already been like an hour ish. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything ever to close these things. I should probably work on it. Do you have anything you want to say to the people before you go? <laughs> well, no, but I want to say to you, like, I really appreciate you reaching out. It's, um, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been thinking about, you know, there's a lot of time to think when you're alone and well, not alone, but like, you know, the world's been different and it's really a blessing to be able to catch up with someone I haven't talked to in a while. And, you know, it felt like we picked up a long time ago. Uh, you know, it was just, it's nice to be able to blab with you and chat and feel like For it sure. hasn't been that long. So thank you. I know it's been like 14 years, but yeah, it hasn't been that long. Uh <laughs> yeah, just, just literally about half our lives. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's the great. So that's why I kind of started this was because I love talking and I love talking to people um, and I love people. And so this gives me a great excuse because otherwise it would be weird if I'd be like, hey, do you want to just video chat for like an hour? And you'd be like, no, I'm busy. Like, <laughs> I'd be like, me too. I don't know why I asked. Uh <laughs> so this gives a not just like you personally the royal you i guess everybody yeah um so yeah that's why I, it's a good excuse to really like talk to people that i haven't talked to in a long time so yeah and it was a great excuse i'm like you know what like i'm always so nervous about these types of things but like if you reached out to me like how could i say no like <laughs> i love the opportunity i embraced it and i'm really glad i did same 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 
Um, I'll end the recording, but it won't end the call. So you can just chill for a second if you want. If you want to leave, you can. I, yeah, do whatever you I'll want. I'll chill for a second. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end it. And then, yeah, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for all the things. And okay, bye.